Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture we'll talk about the byte, the short and the long data types in Java. Here is our outline. First we'll talk about the byte data type, then the short data type and finally the long data type. And after that we will talk a little bit about type conversion. So let's get started. What is a byte? It is a type that is used with integers. So the difference between a byte and an int variable is the range of values. So all the values inside this interval can be stored inside a byte variable. And as you can see, this interval is smaller than the interval of an int variable. So this is the difference, all right? Let's have a look at some examples. We are using the byte keyword and we are initializing three byte variables, b1, b2, and b3. Inside b1, we have minus 128, and this is okay. Also 127 and 100 are okay. But have a look over here. We are initializing b4 to be equal to minus 129. So this will give us an error because this value is less than the minimum. And also over here we will have an error because this value is greater than the maximum, all right? And as you see, the maximum is 127 and the minimum is minus 128, all right? Now let's talk about the short data type. It is also used with integers. So all the numbers in this interval can be stored in a short variable. As you can see, this is greater than a byte and it is less than an integer. So let's have a look at some examples. We are using the short keyword in order to initialize two short variables. And over here we don't have a problem because these values are inside the interval, okay? Have a look over here for example. This value is not inside the interval, it is greater than the maximum. So we'll get an error. Now let's talk about the long data type. It is also used with integers. All the numbers inside this interval can be stored inside a long variable. As you can see, this is greater than an integer. And have a look at this letter over here. We are using the letter L. So by default, all numbers without a decimal part are considered integers in Java. So to tell Java that you are using a long and you are not using an integer, we should use the letter L. So a small letter L or a capital letter L should be added to tell the compiler that a number is a long and it is not an integer. So when we use the letter L, we will be working with a long and not an integer, all right? Now let's see some examples. We are using the long keyword to initialize three variables. First of all, we are assigning L1 to be equal to this value. And this is okay, because this value is inside the interval of values of a long variable. And of course, we are using the letter L, all right? And this is important, as you will see in a little bit. Now let's have a look at L2. We are assigning L2 to be equal to this number over here. Now as we said, by default, this is considered an integer in Java. Now I want you to concentrate on two things over here. First of all, a long is greater than an integer. So a long can store an integer, all right? And also, this number over here is inside the interval of values of an integer. So we don't have a problem with this value. So this is an integer and you are storing it inside a long and we don't have a problem. Now let's have a look over here. We have this value over here. Now this value exceeds the bounds of an integer. It is less than the minimum value of an integer, all right? So Java will see that this is an integer, but it doesn't fit inside the interval of values of an integer. So we will get an error. All right, so to fix this, we have to put the letter L over here. So when we put L, Java will know that this is a long and we will not have a problem. All right, so this is why using L over here is important. So in summary, when a number is inside the interval of values of an integer, we can use it like this without using L and store it inside a long. But when a number exceeds the interval of values of an integer, we should use the letter L in order not to get errors. All right, now let's talk about type conversion. So have a look over here. Now we know four types, byte, short, int, and long. The byte type is the smallest one. And then we have the short, and then the int, and finally the long, right? So long is the largest data type. So a long can store an integer, and a short, and a byte, right? So a long can store all the types before it. Now let's talk about an integer. An integer can store a short and a byte. Because as you can see, an integer is greater than a short and a byte. But an integer cannot store a long, and this is because a long is greater than an integer, alright? Now let's talk about the short. A short variable can store a byte, because as you can see, short is greater than a byte. But it cannot store an integer or a long, because a short variable is smaller than an integer and is smaller than a long, alright? And finally, a byte can only store a byte. So we cannot store a short or an int or a long inside a byte, okay? Now let's see some examples. Suppose that we have these variables over here, a byte, a short, an int, and a long, b1, s1, i1, and l1. And suppose that we are using the assignment operator like this. We are assigning l1 to be equal to b1 plus s1 plus i1. 
First of all, this expression should be calculated. So over here, we want to talk about the type of the result of this expression. What we have to do is to search for the most powerful data type. Over here, we have a byte, and over here, we have a short, and over here, we have an integer. So the result of this expression will be an integer, all right? So in this statement, we are assigning a long to be equal to an integer. And this is okay, because a long can store an integer. Now let's have a look over here. i1 is equal to s1 plus b1. So what is the most powerful data type over here? We have a short and we have a byte. So the result of this expression will be a short, all right? So we are storing a short inside an integer, and this is okay, because an integer can store a short. And finally over here, we are storing a byte inside a short. And this is also okay. So now we might ask, where is type conversion? As we said, the type of the result of this expression will be an integer. So the byte and the short will be converted to an integer, and then this expression will be calculated. The same will happen over here. We have a short and a byte. So the byte will be converted to a short, and then we will calculate this expression. And over here we have a byte. So a byte will be converted to a short, and then we will store it inside S1, alright? Now have a look at these examples. First of all, I1 is equal to L1. This is not okay, because we are assigning an int to be equal to a long, and an int cannot store a long, alright? The same over here, we are assigning a short to be equal to an integer, and this is not okay also. And finally, we are assigning a byte to be equal to an integer, and this is also not okay. Now, I know that this is a lot of information, but don't worry, everything will be clear and easy whenever you start practicing, alright? So this is it, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.